Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now a few years ago AMD released the Ryzen 3 2300X. Now this is a pretty hard CPU to find even on the used market because it was an OEM released and therefore intended for system builders. Now this chip has four cores, four threads and can still be found in a lot of pre-built PCs today, although as I mentioned before, it is pretty difficult to find on its own. I did, however, come across a 30 3300X. No, nope. I wish I could find one of those. I did come across a 2300X pre built gaming PC the other day on the used market for £365. And in combination with an RX 570, I thought it sounded like a pretty good deal. So I thought I'd give it a purchase, test it out, and see what the 2300X could do. Now, with pre built systems, you'll usually find that they come with cheap. Components, the motherboards, the basic A series boards, you might get a single stick of DDR4. And so when I saw this one on eBay, I thought, why not give it a go, see what's inside, and then we can see what the 2300X can do in games as well. Later in the week, or next week, because there's not much of this week left, I'll be taking a look at this chip's overclocking potential as well when a better cooler arrives and allows me to do so. But for now, Let's crack open the pre-built that I found, see what's inside, see what it can do when paired with the RX 570 in 2021, and talk about whether or not you should look out for one of these if you're in the market for a pre-built system. Because to be honest at the moment, you can find some great deals on pre-built systems, and you might even be able to save a bit of money going down the pre-built road than you would actually trying to build a PC yourself from scratch with individual components. So I'm not a fan of the RGB fans, but that's a personal preference. The real problem I have with this case is that it's got a solid glass front that stops the fans from pulling any significant amount of air in. At the moment, that doesn't matter because it seems none of the fans actually spin for whatever reason. This could be down to a setting that's been disabled in the BIOS. It's a problem that's probably easily remedied. Behind the tempered glass side panel we have a pretty neat setup consisting of the Ryzen 3 2300X, RX 570 and 8GB of RAM sitting atop an MSI A320M Pro board. It's a decent A series board and even allows for overclocking thanks to a BIOS update. Now not all A series boards do of course but personally I think if you're on a budget and you have no plans to overclock, then any A-series board is fine if you can save a significant amount of money by buying one. Bear in mind that a lot of Ryzen pre builts ones that don't offer you extensive customization options, will often come with A-series boards because it's cheaper for the manufacturer or builder to include them. It's nice to see that we do have two 4 gig sticks of DDR4 though, even if they are clocked at 2400 MHz. Now from what I've researched, this system was originally from a company called AWDIT here in the UK, who I've often found to be very well priced when it comes to pre-built systems, and they offer a lot of customization options as well. This system would have originally been priced at around £550. I bought it third or possibly fourth hand through a company that sells used systems on eBay, so of course I, or even they, weren't the ones who chose the specs. Other components include a 1TB hard drive and a Cooler Master 500W MWE PSU, which is more than good enough to power this rig and has spare connections for any additional hard drives, etc. The RX 560 sorry 570 we've got inside this setup is an xfx 4 gig black edition it looks pretty good and offers a slightly higher boost speed than a reference card the 2300x cpu is a four core four threaded 3.5 gigahertz chip with a boost clock of four gigahertz and going into this i thought that it would be the limiting factor but i was wrong for the most part it was actually the 570 that held the CPU back in a lot of games, though in certain titles like Cyberpunk 2077, the bottleneck shifted depending on where we were. In the centre of Night City, the crowds and the traffic caused the CPU usage to spike, but driving around outside of town or running around in the countryside means that the 570 maxes out a lot of the time. Both the processor and graphics card remained at a sensible temperature, 
The CPU is running with the stock cooler as well. Of course, availability makes the 2300X hard to recommend, as well as the fact that people selling the chips individually outside of systems sometimes charge silly money for them. Moving on with our game tests, and The Witcher 3, despite being older, is still a demanding game. Here, that was very true as far as the GPU was concerned once again, though there were some CPU spikes that caused micro-freezing and gave us these pretty terrible percentile lows. This only happened every so often and seemed to go away after playing for a while, but I wanted to mention it because it still happened and it's worth knowing about. Still, I'd have to say that an older 4-core 4-threaded Ryzen is probably a better choice these days than an older quad-core i5 from the Sandy Bridge era, for example, though they can of course be found for a lot less money, inside pre-builts or otherwise. CSGO will run fine, and I was surprised to see the 570 once again the limiting factor because of the CPU intensive nature of this game. There were no problems exceeding over 200 FPS with the low settings here. This is going to be the case with either a bot match or an online game. The 2300X is more than capable of playing Counter Strike. Crisis Remastered has seen some performance improvements recently, especially as far as CPU usage is concerned. Because of this, it will run really well here, though the low settings are the best option, as the game sticks to a plus 60 FPS average this way. It still looks really good though. Now for some reason, every time I tried to test Red Dead Redemption 2, the game just crashed and wouldn't get past the opening screen. It should run, there is nothing about this system that isn't capable of running the game, and it should run quite well, but at the moment it was just doing this, leaving me no choice but to hit Control or Delete. Now this won't be the last 2300X video, so I'll try and troubleshoot the problem and include this game properly next time around. Hopefully. In Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, I thought we'd have a more problematic experience because of past games. Um, as far as the CPU is concerned, this is a game that likes to have 8 threads to play with and despite the 2300X maxing out on occasion, the frame rate held up pretty well. The footage here is from a bot match but the figures were taken from an online game. Each map will differ performance wise but there will be no significant problems. As you can see by the on screen stats it's the 570 that is struggling more. Both the overall usage and VRAM usage are at their limits, but with this mix of medium and low settings, the game is actually running okay. Assassin's Creed Valhalla appeared to run smoothly at first glance, using a mixture of low and medium settings, but whenever we ventured near or into busier settlements, there were a few micro freezes. The CPU usage wasn't particularly high, but it could have been the core count causing problems as Assassin's Creed games have, for the past few years, been quite CPU heavy. We also saw a drop in frame rate due to the 570, but stutters and freezes are usually processor related. But overall it's done an okay job in today's tests, and of course the AM4 platform offers plenty of room to upgrade should you want to buy a Ryzen pre-built like this one. The 2300X is still okay these days then, but I'd have to say that 8 threaded CPUs are fast becoming the new minimum for a consistently smooth experience. The 2300X here however did probably have a little more to give, and pairing it with a faster graphics card could give us more frames and a higher amount of memory and faster memory will also benefit it as well, as well as a possible overclock. But we'll be trying out these things in a different video when I aim to improve this pre-built. Thank you for watching this one then. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.